Imagine setting off across a vast desert on a rite of passage, with no one to share the long and lonely trip but your trusty hover bike. On your journey to the horizon, you will traverse a world of beauty and mystery, full of spectacular ruins, both ancient and futuristic. This is the joy of exploration, the thrill of discovery. And if you listen to the stories of the people and places you encounter, perhaps a chance to learn what you came here to understand. This is Sable. Shedworks is us. Um, I'm Greg, and this is Daniel, and we started out with my parents' shed. Sable is the main character. She's a young girl who's leaving her home for the first time. The gliding is what Sable embarks on as the story starts, and it's something that everybody who comes of age in the world of Sable does. It's how you find out what you want to become in life. Leaving your home behind and experiencing the world, meeting people, trying things, helping folks in need, and ultimately deciding what do I want to devote my life to. So much of the people here, the communities here, are defined by their vocation. You know, the desert that they live in is inhospitable, and so they've kind of had to come together and had to form groups around resources. And so Sable kind of goes from place to place, meeting different societies and cultures, built around completely different experiences of the same environment. It means that she has to be a sponge, right? She's trying to figure out her place in the world, what she wants to do for the rest of her days. And I think that's what makes the story so fun. It really is about the places that you go, the people that you see, and the experiences that you have that not only shape her gliding, but shape her. together, you know, our lives have kind of crossed a bit in that period. Uh, your mum taught me art at secondary school. By the time we were at sort of university age, that was when indie games had really kind of taken off as a creative sort of field. I started to think about it was something that I could make myself. I studied architecture, Daniel studied comparative literature, but neither of us had any experience making games before we started making games. We kind of went to the pub one time and um, had a chat about how we, because we had none of these industry direct connections to skills or, or experience, we thought we'd start our own internship, do our own internship in the, in the shed. <laughs> The initial thought was just, let's get some experience on our belt and see where we go from there. Somehow, six years or so later, we're, we're here now, still going. Still right. Yeah. The thing that we've really tried to focus on is exploration, and we kind of geared every design decision that we could around that focus. There's no real danger to the player in the game. It is quite relaxing in a way, but that doesn't make it less curious a world to explore. I think 
thinking you need to think about it is how lowly it is, and the pace of the game is very uh, laid back. It was the first game that we designed that was really geared around our skills as well, our backgrounds. So we wanted to do something narrative focused, uh, you know, do a background in comparative literature, we wanted something to do architectural, architecturally focused. And my background in architecture helped with that. So I think that it's come from us in that way makes it quite unique. We draw from a number of references and influences, I suppose. I guess some of the most obvious ones are the, the visual ones, right? Stuff like uh, Mobius or um, or Tintin, Herb, or um, Studio Ghibli, and the, you know those kind of pieces were always influential. Yeah, it does have that mix of ancient and futuristic to our eyes, right, who live here, but to the eyes of Sable and to everyone in that world, that is all that they know. We brought Daphne's Breakfast onto the project really early on, like before we really started it. And so our music has kind of been there from the very beginning. So that's been, a, the music itself has been a really big part of shaping, shaping whether the direction of the game. <laughs> In the gothic fairy tale Lost in Random, the world is divided into six shadowy realms, where every citizen's fate is determined by the roll of a cursed die. 